Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This week's theme is Sicilian. Whenever I first saw this theme, I was actually really excited because I love Italian food and Sicily is like right by Italy, so I kind of expected it to be basically the same. But it was actually really interesting whenever I was doing some research into it. Sicilian food has a lot of different cultural influences because any empire who came through trying to take control of the Mediterranean trade routes, Sicily just in its location, that was one of the main places that they would end up. And so it has a lot of different influences from a lot of cultures. It has Italian influence, it has African, there's Arab and Greek and all these different cultures of food that have influenced Sicilian food. So it's kind of a cool mashup of a lot of different things. So I'm very excited to try some of this stuff today. A lot of it I'd never even, most of it I'd never even heard of. So what I'm gonna be making today is called arancini, which I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, but it's a very popular Sicilian street food. And basically what it is, is risotto. You use like leftover risotto and you fill it with ricotta cheese and then you deep fry it, which sounds really delicious to me. So I decided that I would give that a try. Also, most of the other recipes that I found for traditional Sicilian food were like swordfish or squid. I live in Oklahoma. We're not gonna be finding that stuff here. And if we did, it would not be good and it would be expensive. So we're going with the arancini. Most of this is gonna be made over on the stove, so you guys will get to have a bit of a different camera angle than usual, which is exciting, right? So let's hop over there and get started. So to start off, I need to make my risotto, my rice. So I'm gonna put one liter of water into this saucepan and bring that up to a simmer. All right, that's almost to a simmer. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my rice. This is 300 grams of Arborio rice. And side note, this is a British recipe. So all of the amounts are in grams and liters instead of cups and teaspoons and all that stuff like I'm used to. But I'm going to put 300 grams of rice into this pan just by itself and I'm going to toast it for a little bit before adding the water. So I'm just going to put that over medium high heat. All right, this is now toasted. My water is more or less boiling. So I'm going to go ahead and add just one ladle full of the water. So I'll take that off of the heat and just take one scoop and put it in with the rice. That scared me. I was not expecting that. I'll turn my heat down a little bit. And I'm also going to add, this is 0.3 grams of turmeric. It said saffron, but I don't have any saffron. That stuff is expensive. And I looked it up and it said that turmeric was a decent substitute for that. So we'll go ahead and sprinkle that in here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add some more water. Hopefully it doesn't explode on me again. And then once all of that water has been absorbed by the rice, it's time to add another spoonful of water. Now that it's not screaming at me, that really scared me. I was not expecting that. I'll go ahead and add in the last of this water. This food is trying to attack me. It keeps jumping out at me and burning me. Should I be scared? And I haven't even gotten to the deep frying part yet. This could end very poorly. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that cook and absorb the rest of that water and cook off the rest of that water. And then I'm gonna add some more things to it. And then I'm just gonna stir that in, let my butter melt, get the cheese all melted, all that good stuff. And actually, to help speed along the process, I'm going to go ahead and turn this just on low. 
and just get a little bit of heat in there to help that butter melt. This is reminding me of mac and cheese right now. Looks like that's all mixed in, and so I'm just going to set this to the side off of the heat and let it cool down for about 20 or 30 minutes until it's cool enough to handle. So, see you guys in a bit. I was letting this cool, and then I reread the recipe and realized I was supposed to add oil before I let it cool. I'm going to go ahead and add 20 grams of extra virgin olive oil. And this is still fairly warm, so I think it'll be okay. Just mix that in. Now that I've added all the things that I was supposed to have added in the first place, I'm going to go ahead and let this cool for about 20 more minutes, and I will see you guys then. Now that my rice is cooled, I'm going to whip up some ricotta cheese, and that's going to be the filling whenever I shape the rice into the little balls that I'm then going to fry. So this is 240 grams of ricotta cheese, and I'm just going to mix it with my electric mixer. That was my timer to let the rice cool. Um, but I'm just going to mix it with my electric mixer until it's nice and fluffy. And now I'm going to transfer this into a piping bag. You could also use like a Ziploc bag and just cut off one of the corners. Okay, so apparently I don't have any piping bags. I don't know where they are, but I used to have some. I don't, can't find any. So I'm going to be using a Ziploc bag. So I'll just fold the top over and then put it in with a spoon. And you just fold it up and cut one corner off. Now I'm going to start shaping my arancini. I don't really know how big to make these. It doesn't really say. So I'm just gonna, about, about like that. Cause I don't want them to be massive, but I don't want them to be tiny. So I'm just gonna shape it into a ball. No, I have to pipe the, okay. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna make it into a little bowl. And then I'm going to pipe some of my filling in and then I will close it and make a, it into just a ball. See if that technique works. Okay, that seems to have worked. I don't know if these are gonna hold together very well when I fry them, but it's like a little meatball, except not made of meat. So I'm just gonna shape all of those and put them onto this baking tray. There we go. It made a nice even 20, which I appreciate, but it is time to get out my um, breading my dredge. It's time to fry them. I have three different bowls. In the first one, I'm going to put flour and then two eggs. And then the last one will be breadcrumbs. There's really no amount for the flour. So I'm just going to start off with a half cup and then I can always add more later. And then the eggs I'm going to crack into here and then beat with a fork. And the breadcrumbs are about the same as the flour. I'm just going to start out with about half a cup and then I can add more if I need to. All right, now I'm just going to take one little arancini and I'm going to put it into the flour first and just dust it in the flour. Knock all the excess off, and then it's gonna go into the egg. And let the excess drip off. And then last, it's gonna go into the breadcrumbs. And then I will put it back onto my tray. Only remaining step is to fry these little guys up. So into this large saucepan, I'm going to add some oil. I'm using safflower oil only because it was the cheapest large quantity oil that I could find at the store today. They didn't have any like canola oil or anything. You can use this for deep frying, so hopefully it'll go smoothly. I'm going to fill this large saucepan, I think about halfway full. Again, it doesn't give me an amount in the recipe, and I have fried stuff before, but I did it in a big like Dutch oven sort of thing. I don't think these are big enough for me to need to have that much oil. So I'm just gonna do it in this saucepan. 
and just fill it about halfway full. Well, I ended up using the entire bottle and it's still not half full, but I think it's deep enough that it'll still work. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat on and bring this up to 170 degrees Celsius. And luckily, my thermometer has both Celsius and Fahrenheit, so I don't even have to convert. <laughs> Hey guys, editing Emily here. This really funny thing happened. If you remember from a couple of videos ago, I used my parents' camera as my secondary camera and then realized after the fact that the quality was horrible compared to this camera. And so I had to come on and let you guys know about that. Well, the video after that, I decided to use my brother's GoPro as my secondary camera. And that worked so much better. The quality was great. It was just, it worked perfectly. So I did the same thing for this week's video. But then this morning, he came into my room and was like, hey, are you done with my GoPro? And I was like, yeah, here you go, and gave it to him. And then I sat down to edit this video and realized I never got my footage off of his GoPro. And he deleted it all because I told him that I was done with it. So it's entirely my fault. But all of that footage is gone. So the rest of this video, the second half especially, it might be a little bit choppy because at one point this camera died and so I was primarily using the GoPro. And I don't have any of that anymore. And there are some scenes in here that you're gonna see where I'm like holding the GoPro and like talking and I was planning on using the GoPro footage to show you like what it looks like when it's frying or whatever. But I don't have any of that. So I'm just gonna try and work with the clips that I have. I'm gonna try and make it work. I think I can still pull off a decent video out of this, but it's gonna be a little, little rough. So I just wanted to let you guys know and just please bear with me and I will try to not have any secondary camera issues next week. <laughs> Anyways, back to the video. Alright, it's almost to the right temperature, so I'm going to go ahead and turn my heat down just a little bit so that it doesn't go way over the temperature, and I'll probably be playing with that the whole time. And I don't have any good frying utensils, so I have some tongs, and then I have this slotted spoon. So I'm just gonna try the tongs first, I think, and see which of these works best. So I'm just gonna do maybe two or three of these guys at a time. Just pick it up and drop it right in. We'll try three at a time at first. Don't want it to be too crowded. And I'm just gonna let that go for about five or six minutes. Um, depending on if it floats to the top or anything. I might let it go like two or three minutes and then turn it and then two or three more minutes. Whoa, my temperature went way over. It's up to like 185 degrees Celsius. That is well over where I need it to be. So we're gonna turn the heat down, let the temperature come down a little bit. It's so hard to keep it at a steady temperature. I don't understand if that's actually a thing or not. Like, are you supposed to fry things and keep it at the same temperature? because mine always fluctuates up and down. If it goes below, I turn the heat up. If it goes above, I turn the heat down. It's just a never ending battle. Cool down. <laughs> I don't think that's working. All right, it's starting to cool down. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip these over. They've been in here for about a minute or so. These have only been in here for about three and a half minutes, but they're looking pretty dark. So I'm thinking I might go ahead and pull them out because I don't want them to get overcooked, of course. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out and just set them down on this uh, sheet tray that I've put, that I've lined with paper towels. All right, and now I will add some more. I guess these first ones that I did, they do have a few kind of light spots. So maybe I should have waited for these spots to be darker as well. I don't know. It could be an issue, you can't see my face. It could be an issue that my oil was too hot though because then it would cook it quicker on the outside and not be able to cook it all the way through. I don't know. But it's about the right temperature right now, so we're just gonna try and keep it there as, as best as I can. <laughs> All right, it's been about five and a half minutes on these, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull them out. 
Yeah, those look quite a bit better than the first ones. I think it was just too hot the first time. I hear those sizzling. All right, three more. And here they all are. They're very cute little, they still look like meatballs, just fried meatballs. But I am going to take one of the first ones that I did since these were kind of the rougher ones and I'm gonna break it open and see what it looks like. So let me grab a plate. I'll come up here so you guys can see too. Wait, no, you can't see. Now you can see. All right. Ooh. Okay, I was expecting a bit of like a cheese stretch, but I guess ricotta doesn't do that. But look at that. It looks pretty good. Mmm. That's a very unique flavor. And I think mainly because of the lemon. That's kind of throwing me off because you have like the cheese and the butter and the oil and then lemon. Like it's just kind of a little bit unexpected, but it's a really nice, it adds a nice acidity to the whole, the overall flavor. That's pretty good. I think it could have used a touch more salt, um, especially with all the cheese in this. I'm kind of expecting a little bit more saltiness and it's just not quite delivering on that. But that's still pretty good flavor. Well, I ate the whole thing. That was very good. So before we go, next week's challenge is going to be breakfast baking. So if you guys have any ideas uh, as to what I can make for that, something I can incorporate into that, please leave a comment down below and let me know about that. I'll be sure to read through those comments and who knows, I might pick your idea to use next week. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next week. Bye.